Thank you for being with us on the other side of the radio. And yes, the program is health wise. My name is Osatwame Igaluchima. We'll be discussing this morning, and uh, we have with us in the studio Dr. Philip Omotoshaw, also known as Dr. Health Geek. He is a medical doctor, he's a content creator, and an health influential. And one thing about um, the way he creates content that is health related is he infuses humor into his teachings when he teaches or when he explains one or two issues you would want to watch more because you would understand and when it comes to his teachings his explanation he knows how to he knows his onions thank you so much dr omotasha for coming to rock city fm this morning thank you radio pepe it's always a pleasure to be here good morning listeners at home all right so let us um, break it down for us what exactly is uh, food poisoning so that the layman outside can understand so, so food poisoning is an illness that one gets by eating food that or food items are contaminated with germs the layman calls it food poisoning but in the medical world the medical community we call it foodborne illnesses but that makes more sense because you're not actually being poisoned by the food per se but rather one is being infected by something that has found its way into the food Okay, we, we know how we feel when we have heartburn. So how what are the symptoms that we can actually get to feel when we we experience food poisoning? So basically, you know, the illness affects the guts and causes the guts, the bowels to be inflamed. So the symptoms are mainly gastrointestinal, you know, it causes gastroenteritis. You know, I once said that in the medical jargon, IT refers to inflammation. So we have gastro entero stomach intestine plus anitis gastroenteritis so um generally the, the cause diarrhea which is frequent loose or watery stools so by the germs the pathogens the pathogens are the disease causing organisms when they in it, they get to the gut they disturb the normal equilibrium the balance that you have in the gut the architecture so that results in diarrhea so aside diarrhea you could have vomiting you know that might not apply to her but that's um, more profound with Staphylococcus aureus. So Staphylococcus um, caused food poisoning. You have um, vomiting predominantly in that. So in addition, you have the general feeling of unwell, being, feeling unwell, malay, or general weakness, could have nausea, abdominal cramps, and all of that. In rare occasions, aside for the severe ones, serious infections, you could have um, high grade fever, and then even blood in stool, which is what we call dysentery. So some organisms are more virulent. There are many organisms that cause um, this uh, food poisoning. So some are more virulent, you know, more wicked than the others. Those can cause erosion of the intestinal the gut, and then you begin to have bleeding from the gut adding up to the feces, and then you have blood in stool, which is what we call dysentery. All right, I had someone that actually experienced food poisoning a couple of weeks, and then he, the, due to the diarrhea, he was so weak, he could not even take in anything edible. And so my question is, what can one actually eat when you have food poisoning? Especially after you've gone to the toilet countless of times and you're so weak that there is nothing in your system at that point. First, we need to differentiate between the uncomplicated, the mild diarrhea, okay. and then the severe ones. Severe ones. So okay. I'll be mentioning some red flags. Okay. Now, when you see those red flags, please present to the hospital. Okay. There's no point saying you want to manage it at, at home. Okay. Now, uh, those red flags include when you notice blood in your stool or vomitus. Or vomitors so or uh, when that the diarrhea is lasting for more than three days you know that's a red flag mm. or when there are many episodes within a short period of time you know that's also another red flag or when there is vomiting and diarrhea and several episodes of vomiting such that you can't even tolerate anything orally so mm. because there's a need to replenish the Watch field that's been lost yes. so what, the moment you see that you can't take in orally because of frequent vomiting and you know you have to also present in the hospital generally i advise that any diarrhea episode in a child you know, once you present the hospital, because children um, don't do well with dehydration. So, mm -hmm. and within a sh before you say Jack Robinson, they're already extremely weak. You don't want to wait until a child is extremely weak and prostrated before you take that child to the hospital. So, once you see that a child is dehydrated, maybe the urinary volume, the quantity of urine that the child is passing is low, or the mm -hmm. child is complaining of being thirsty, or the high balls are now mm -hmm. sunken, mm -hmm. or the mouth feels dry, and you know you need to take that child to the hospital. Or when there is a severe tummy pain or a high fever. And like I said, when there's blood mm, in this stool, all of this will not be managed at home. There's a need to present to the hospital. So let's now talk about the mild ones, yes. the uncomplicated ones that you can manage at home. Generally, they, they are self-limiting. In fact, most uh, food poisoning cases 
can be treated at home, can be managed at home, they, are, they can subside on their own. Right. So the best, what we do basically is to support the body system. Now, I'm going to talk about, I think, about four do's and four don'ts. Okay. What to do, you know, at home and what not to do. So during an uncomplicated case, what to do, there's a need to drink lots of water. You know, like I said, lots of fluid to replenish what is being lost. The made for, for majority of food poisoning cases, the major complication is um, dehydration. Because the hydration can in turn lead to a kidney injury. Insult mm. can insult the kidney. So that's what we don't want, whether in children or in adults. So you want to replenish as quickly as possible what is being lost. And also to replenish the electrolyte. Needful to say that when there's food poisoning and there's diarrhea, one is not just losing fluid. You're also losing certain ingredients in the blood that help the body to function very well, which we call electrolyte. So um, there's a need to replenish the electrolyte. And plain water will not do that. Okay. So there's a need to replenish with ORS, oral rehydration salts. Those are readily available in form of powder and sachet nowadays. You can easily um, quickly just mix that with water, clean and sterile water and take. So that will ensure that the electrolytes are replenished. But in the setting where I say people listening to us are listening from village where you can't, you don't even have access to ORS, you can have a homemade oral rehydration right. solution. Now, I know you, you get a liter of water, boil, then you allow it to cool. Then you have sugar and salt. There are varying um, ratio of salt, okay. sugar, salt mixture. Sugar. But the WHO recommends eight teaspoonful of um, sugar right. to one teaspoon of salt. So eight of sugar to one of salt in one liter of what? sterile water. So that will also help replenish to a large extent some of the electrolytes that has been lost. Mm -hmm. So um, also when one is having the diarrhea episode, it's important to rest well. I mean, in fact, as a standard practice, one shouldn't go to school or to work. As a matter of fact, one should not step out to work or school until 48 hours after the last episode of vomiting or diarrhea. Okay. Because during that period, one is still very infectious. So it's, as, as much as we are trying to help you recover, we are also trying to say don't infect other, other people. people. So it's very important. Uh, then it's important not to prepare food. You know about that as much as you can okay. if you're a wife or in the home it's better not to prepare food now what are the things not to eat yes. during um food poisoning, food poisoning? It's, it's good to abstain from dairy products okay. dairy products and caffeine because the intestine is already irritated so those would worsen the, the irritation you know then one can start eating in, as soon the moment as the moment you feel like you're up to it but then we advise one starts with bland diet now, by bland diet, we mean food that is not too spicy, okay, that is not mild. too oily, yeah. and that is soft as much as possible, like cracker, you know, like um, okay. toasted bread, banana, rice without um, spice, you know, all of that. Those are the those are the important things to ensure. So I think those are basically the things that you do. Yeah. But the moment one sees that, despite all of this measure, like I said, after like two to three days and one is not feeling better or getting any better, there's a need to get to the hospital. Okay, so there was a particular time I, I with my hands, I prepared a goosey soup. Yeah. And then I added ugu leaf. And because I wanted extra flavor, I added uziza leaf. Okay. But I discovered that after consuming, I made this meal myself. I went to the toilet for three days nonstop. Yeah. So is that also a case of food poisoning? Yes. Now, so many, I, I forgot to mention, when talking about food poisoning, there's a range of things that can cause food poisoning okay including bacteria viruses allergens mm -hmm. toxins and uh, even parasites so those are now it's possible now I, I, we can't completely rule out the fact that okay. the food item or the veg veggies was contaminated, contaminated okay. but mm -hmm. if let's assume that it wasn't contaminated it's possible that there must have been an allergen something that your system it's generally reacts to okay. for instance um the common allergen in food allergen that we know is gluten. Gluten is what you find in barley, in wheat, in rye, and all of that. that uh, there's a fraction of the population, though few, that are particularly allergic to that um, gluten. So when they eat that, they have diarrhea symptoms, bloating, and all of the symptoms we have talked about. But uh, there's something I need to mention also, okay. in, uh, particularly about uh, rinsing vegetables and ensuring that vegetables are properly rinsed because um those are those are means by which people okay. get these organisms mm -hmm. most people rinse vegetables or their hands or fruit and meat and the likes in a bowl of water now okay. that's very wrong there's a need in fact what is recommended is to rinse under a running tap but, but we are in nigeria and okay most of us don't, don't have, have to yeah but we can yeah. simulate that okay how we do can we have that? somebody to pour water from a height 
Just so what if you are the only one at home and you need okay, to Okay, if you are the only one at home, the alternative is to have a sieve or a container with holes. Okay. Such that if you're rinsing your veggies, for instance, the water with which you are rinsing is draining immediately okay. through the hole. Okay. Because look at it, what people do when we try to rinse in a bowl that the water is not flowing out. Mm. The same contaminants that include dirt and pathogen that you claim you have rinsed out, why trying to now bring up or bring out your hand or your veggies or fruit or whatever? You're also bringing them right. along. The things you have rinsed out, you're bringing them back. So many times we think we have rinsed, we have rinsed so much, but we are not doing the best. So it's better to rinse veggies and some of those things in a container that has all, you know, through which the water is draining out. Okay. And those that we say are lactose intolerant, that is when they take any dairy products, they get issues. Yeah, is that's that another also? legend, yes. It also classified among um, the broad classification of food poisoning. So I think I just mentioned, if time permits, a little bit about how we get some of this um, food, how we get our food contaminated. Yes, yes. All right, so it could come by um, food not being properly cooked, you know, or not properly stored, mm. you know. So it also comes from mishandling food, mishandling food. For instance, you don't wash your hand before or after after cooking, or food that are not properly refrigerated, or eating semi spoiled food items and all of that so i talked already i emphasized um, the place of rinsing veggies very well and washing a hand there's a proper hand washing technique mm -hmm. most people don't do it you know many times just get the two parts together and rub it and you yeah. think that's all no there's more to hand washing than that you could just get online and look for a video pathogens germs can hide in between the webs between the fingers the webs between the fingers so while washing there's a need to overlap the digits and rinse even all of those places wash the ring the wrist even the fingernails to try and just squeeze within the fingernails to bring out you know under a running tap so hand washing is deeper many people if you gather them and you ask them to wash their hand if you bring them back and you come at, at, now teach mm -hmm. them the proper you see how much of dirt and gems they will still wash out you know all of that then grilling meats meats okay. meats no meats meat is a very common what's it called now commodity that is being yeah, food items that attract contaminant and gems okay. now because i mean even there in the market you can you you need to see in the marketplace especially in this environment where uh meat sellers even with their hands try to swing and drive away flies and yes. we know that flies as you know they pop they commonly bring pathogens and gems and drop on the meat so you can't guarantee the hygiene of your meat prior to purchase but once you get it you can rinse very well but that's not enough that's why meat needs to be properly cooked okay. but now in this situation in the setting where people grill meat some people don't even grill um using the standard temperature and duration for that particular meat mm -hmm. you know for chicken or whatever meat type there's a standard temperature it needs to be subject to and for a particular standard duration before it's properly cooked so those are things that we need to also ensure Okay. We need to ensure. Let, let me quickly talk about me. Most of us are guilty of this thing. Would you advise or would you suggest as a medical doctor when you boil meat with your seasoning, will you suggest that we use the stock to make maybe a pot of soup or will you suggest that we just discard? Although we know that the stock gives your meal extra flavor. Flavor. Yes. Yeah, it all depends if it's properly cooked. You know, you know, some people don't cook meat deeply. They just do it lightly mm -hmm. because they know that aside the boiling, they will probably still fry. Okay. Now in that setting, that meat was not, not proper. Properly. If I salt meat, if you try and eat it after the boiling, you still find out that there, there's bloody or mm. poorly cooked um, meat within, deep within. So for salt, whatever water you get from there, might, might still contain some of those um, pathogens. So, but then if you can ensure that you properly cook and subject the water, you know, to standard temperature that at least can take care of most of the pathogens then it's it's all well and good all right last but not the least uh what other things what other information would you want to share this morning on food poisoning and now people there's also a need to be aware of expiry dates oh. of um stored Product. foods okay. products for instance canned food items corned beef sardines and all of that and uh, particularly in this environment sausage rolls the mm. gala the rice okay. and biggie no, because th those are common causes of um, food poisoning too. By the time the food item has exceeded it's, it's best, you know, okay, that's before, before date. date. So it, it, what it simply means is that whatever um, preservative they put in those food items can only last the preservation up to that best before date, after which you're on your own. Mm -hmm. So those are some issues too that we don't pay attention to. People tend to consume some of these products without even looking at the expiry. Trust me, many of these 
there are many there are many of these products that even at the retail shop mm. they already expire and yeah. some of them know it they don't tell you some don't even know there are those that until i check and show them and then woman will express um mm. a surprise oh i didn't know and all of that so those are some of the issues that we need to also pay attention to okay for that expiry date i discovered that most of those products are, they will only have the month and uh the year maybe they could just say august 2023 so is it first of august or to the end of august how do we know the whole of the month the whole of the although month. for those are for food items that can be preserved over years okay. so they don't just they don't bother to put a date, the date okay. you know but for something like uh, sausage rolls mm. they, will, they have to put a date because it might not even be best to consume it after seven days okay. for instance so they, they'll be specific okay. when they certain where they're not specific it means till the end of that end month, of that month. Oh, well, it's better to be on the side of precaution i mean okay. if they say something's going to expire in august mm -hmm. i mean when you are you approaching that? the end of august it's just better to do and uh, sometimes I, i'm i've been guilty of this too sometimes you have a it's an expensive meal mm -hmm. and you you probably refrigerated it but by the time you brought it out you find out that is semi-spot and you don't just want to waste the money yeah. so you just struggle and struggle and try and consume the thing now often time you, you you're claiming you don't want to waste the money but by the time food poisoning comes you know it will cost more mm. than what you're trying to save for instance so for instance I, I think there was a time i bought bush meat you know it could be it can be very expensive and it was so delicious but there was that taste of semi spoiling okay. and i still struggled and then went and on trust me i had days of diarrhea so imagine imagine the productivity for those days mm. and you know the the fact that you are incapacitated you don't get to go to work well and even the money you spend on ors and buying ever yeah. water and all of those things you see so so i think we should be more careful with that too. once a food you taste a semi spoiled food please just do away with it in your no best matter interest. how much you yeah, spend it's good so. to do away with okay it. we really appreciate you dr philip omotosho thank you for coming out the way this morning it's, so it's always a pleasure to have you with us because we know that you do justice to whatever it is you want to talk about thank you so much thank dr. you philip thank omotosho. you very much we appreciate you and please don't forget to share this information with your next door neighbor until i come your way again my name is Osama. Atuame, Ikalu, Chima.